Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. You just spent all of your money on a Steam Summer Sale, and after installing a 40 gigabyte game, you just realized your computer can't even run it. So, where's your bottleneck, and should you upgrade or replace your computer? We're gonna try to help you with that. But first things first, what is a bottleneck? It's when one or more of your components are preventing the others from performing optimally and giving you a smooth gaming experience. Another thing to note is a bottleneck is not necessarily contributed to one component, but more to what you're expecting your components to do. For example, running a 1080p monitor is a lot less taxing and you could probably get by with just a GTX 970. But if you wanna run 4K, that 970 is most likely gonna bottleneck other components in your computer. Another thing you need to know is don't trust forums. So many times you see people posting, my computer has these specs. Will a GTX 970 bottleneck it? And people may say, yes, you need to upgrade, or no, it's just fine and you need a new processor, without any specifics on what your needs are. Rarely can one component in your computer be attributed to an entire system bottleneck. Everyone's computers are different and everyone's needs are different. So we're gonna teach you how to find your bottleneck to fit your specific needs. What we have in front of me is a computer that a friend and I put together on a very tight budget. And initially it did very well for him playing MOBAs, but recently he decided to start playing ARC. And when I say start playing, I mean barely start playing. His computer specs are a Core 2 Quad Q9400, four gigabytes of DDR2 RAM, and a GTX 560 with a 256 gig SSD. It ran fine on simpler games, but ARC is really taxing it and we wanna figure out why. I want to say a disclaimer, Arc is in Steam Early Access and is not an optimized game yet. I do not recommend using this game for your tests. You need to run the games that you are experiencing bottlenecks in to find out what you need specifically. First thing you need to do before you do anything else is check the minimum system requirements for the game you're trying to run. Often you can find this in Steam or somewhere else online. Sometimes you can find a glaring deficiency in the list and it's gonna be very easy for you to figure it out without having to do any tests whatsoever. Next thing to do if you pass step one is to make sure there are no software-based issues that you're running into, such as needed driver updates or background programs that are hogging all of your system resources. If you did both of those steps and you are still experiencing a bottleneck, next step is to download MSI Afterburner. This is the program we're gonna be using to monitor our system resources to see which is being hogged up. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do after installing MSI Afterburner is go into your settings and then move over to monitoring, which is the third tab over. Now here it will show you all different kinds of things you can monitor from GPU temp down to bus usage, fan speed, so on and so forth. And today the one thing we're gonna be focusing on is GPU temperature, or GPU usage, sorry. Um, and you click on the GPU usage, go down to show on-screen display, and then hit OK. Now we're gonna go back into settings. I'm gonna show you a couple things quickly. You can also monitor your CPU temperatures, your CPU usage, and your RAM usage. We will be monitoring these, but not in MSI Afterburner. I'm actually going to use Windows Task Manager for that. Windows Task Manager, the reason I'm choosing this is because it actually is a lot visually easier to understand on the fly while you're doing gameplay than the MSI Afterburner is. And the other reason I'm using this is because you can do options always on top. The only reason I'm using MSI Afterburner at all is actually because it Windows Task Manager does not have an option for monitoring your graphics card's load or temperature. Let's open up Steam Arc, and we're actually gonna play on extremely low memory because there's only four gigabytes of memory in this system. The other advantage to having Windows Task Manager on top is you can cycle through CPU usage, memory usage, and even your network usage, which we are not going to be covering in this video. Um, we're just gonna focus on CPU, memory, and graphics uh, loads. The other thing to keep in mind is typically you would also want to monitor temperatures, but seeing how this computer is not overclocked and was recently built, I'm not all that worried about our CPU temperatures. So, first thing we're gonna do here is go to our options, if it would load, there we go. And here you can see our graphics settings are extremely low, except for anti-aliasing. Why was anti-aliasing up? 
Well, we're trying to switch it to low here. Um, and then resolution scale is pretty high. We're going to set that down to about half. So hopefully we can get this game playable. Okay, right now we are seeing about 88% utilization on the CPU, which is actually higher than I was expecting. Why is it not playing still player? There we go. Okay, and now you can see our memory is also running at uh, three gigabit or gigabytes. And our GPU is running only at 26, but we aren't even in the game yet. So this is actually different than what I was expecting. I was not expecting CPU utilization to be this high. Um, this game is also very, uh, Low thread count, typically a dual core will run this, but the higher frequency dual core will take you pretty far, farther than a lower frequency quad core. But I was expecting the GPU to be our primary bottleneck and possibly our memory. Granted, we are running this game on the very low memory usage, and we're still running at three and a half gigabytes right now. This game, I know from experience playing it can use up to six and a half gigabytes of RAM. And I know this because I run it on my own computer and I did this test on my own computer. So just something to keep in mind. Oh dear gosh, this looks terrible. So we are currently playing Arc, kind of. Um, and as you can see, our CPU usage is running right around 91%, which is pretty bad. But we did have to adjust a few settings. Uh, we didn't realize the resolution was set to 720p with low scaling. And we are now running at 97% GPU utilization. Keep in mind, everything but the resolution is turned off. The resolution is, ma is maxed out for this monitor, but every other graphical setting is turned completely off. Our memory usage, surprisingly, is only running at about three gigabytes. So I'm actually surprised and a little bit impressed by that, but that means that a new CPU might be in order before more RAM. Granted, we are running in the very low RAM usage, so maybe an option is overclocking this processor. Um, but the game, we are getting pretty smooth playable frame rates with these settings, but everything is being taxed at its max. I think what might have been the problem is when we started this up. Cameron had anti-aliasing all the way up, and that is something that will definitely tax your graphics card, especially one with only one gigabyte of VRAM. So that might have been his biggest problem. This is actually a relatively reasonable experience now that we're playing it, but everything is being pushed to its limit. So this game is barely playable at minimum settings. So we are experiencing essentially three bottlenecks, memory, GPU, and RAM. Um, my recommendations on fixing this would probably be upgrade to more RAM from four to eight gigabytes, upgrade the graphics card and overclock the processors. These Core 2 quads are known for very good overclocking and with a decent uh, cooler, we should be able to get it pretty far. If you want a good representation of an actual bottleneck, one of these should be running at less than 100% or 90%. For example, if the graphics card was running at 100% or 99% and the processor was running at, let's say, 60%, clearly your graphics card is your bottleneck. Same thing with the memory. If your memory is pegged out at its maximum capacity, but your processor is running at 60%, you are still running into a different bottleneck. You're running into a RAM bottleneck at that point. So what you're looking for is the component with the highest load, and that is your bottleneck. Um, this is only an example for gaming. There will be different ways of checking for bottlenecks in different applications, but this is basically the best way to do it for gaming. Okay, so we adjusted a few settings, and we are running right between 30 and 40 frames per second on average. You can actually bring up in the same way we brought up our GPU usage in MSI Afterburner, you can do the same thing for FPS counter. One thing we also noticed is that when we were running our screen recording software, OBS, we were running at 90% CPU utilization. Now that we have turned that off, we are actually running right around 50% CPU utilization, which is a much bigger improvement and just exacerbates the point that our graphics card is definitely our bottleneck. Memory again would be a bottleneck if we were running on different settings in Arc. 
in a different game mode, but this actually is still running within our three and a half to four gigabytes buffer. So after tweaking our settings, we found that our CPU was running at 50 to 70% utilization. Our RAM was running at three and a half gigabytes and our GPU is running at 99% utilization across the board during the entire benchmarking. This goes to show us and emphasize that our graphics card in this game is definitely our bottleneck. We were running at the absolute lowest graphics settings we could get besides our resolution, which was running at the native resolution for this monitor. By following the same principles that we outlined here, you should be able to tell whether or not your computer is being held back by your processor, RAM, or graphics cards. So, should he upgrade or build a whole new system? Well, since the graphics card is his only bottleneck in his most taxing game, an upgrade sounds like a phenomenal idea. If his processor was a bottleneck, he might want to consider a whole new system because any modern system is going to be running with either DDR3 or DDR4. He is currently running with DDR2, which means he would have to get new mo processor, motherboard, and RAM. A single GPU is something he can carry over into his next build, so that is the route he should go. At the end of the day, no one can tell you specifically what you need to upgrade in your computer till these tests are done. Now you can determine for yourself if it's worth upgrading or if you need to look into purchasing a whole new system. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, leave a comment if there's anything you'd like us to cover in the future, listen to our podcasts wherever you find your podcasts, and check out our forum at techtested.io.